What's going on everyone? It's Nick. Hope you guys are doing great and who's excited for the World Series to begin? Did anyone actually expect the Atlanta Braves to make the World Series during the season? I'm sure there are people who predicted this before the season, but in season my guess is no. I could be wrong about my guess. Maybe there are people who actually still believed in this team outside of the organization during the season when they were struggling. I guess you can let me know, but they were lucky to even win their division considering their division was the weakest in baseball. A division that was so weak, four AL East teams would have won that division. The Braves were 88 and 73. Yeah, they played 161 games because they had a game against the Rockies that got postponed and it was never made up. That's beside the point though. I just wanted to answer that now in case anyone wanted to ask why they only played 161 games. But for most of the season, it looked like the Mets would be the ones who were lucky to win that really weak division. But then they lost Jacob DeGrom to injury when DeGrom looked like he would easily win his third Cy Young award in four seasons. Meanwhile, the Braves entered the All-Star break below 500 and went 44 and 28 in the second half of the season. Good for a 6-11 winning percentage and won 11 of their last 13 games. So we can say they had some momentum going in their favor heading into the postseason. It seemed bold at the time for the Braves to buy at the deadline instead of sell when they were a sub 500 team at the time. They got Jock Peterson who wasn't spectacular for the Braves during the regular season but was definitely better than he was as a Cub this year. Jorge Soler, a guy who was horrible for the Royals this year, despite hitting 48 home runs just two seasons ago, he didn't even hit 200 and his OPS wasn't even 700 during his time with the Royals this season. He most certainly played a lot better when he was a Brave though. The Braves NLCS MVP Eddie Rosario was another trade deadline acquisition. We'll talk more about him later. Adam Duvall was another trade deadline acquisition as well and although he hits for very low average he doesn't even have a decent on base percentage however he did lead the league in RBIs. None of this seemed like it would move the needle for the team at the trade deadline. When I made my trade deadline video I'm pretty sure I did not talk about the Braves at least if I'm remembering correctly. If any Braves fans are watching this did you really think that this team would actually get this far? If yes then that's amazing if no hey I won't judge not like I had any faith in this team. To be fair though, I didn't really watch the Braves this season. As much as I do love sports, I'm only one guy, so it's not like I can watch everything. But I will tell you that I'm pretty fascinated with the fact that the Braves got this far when they really weren't supposed to. Now, if you could please consider liking this video, if you're liking what you're seeing so far, that'd be much appreciated. If you want to consider subscribing for more sports content, that'd be much appreciated as well. And also, yeah, if you want to hit that notification bell and follow me on social media with the links down below, I'll follow you back. Now let's keep going. So the Braves lost their star player, Ronald Acuna, to a torn ACL in the middle of the year. Mike Soroka tore his Achilles and then re-tore it in the middle of the season, so he hasn't pitched at all this year. It's pretty horrible. Horrible to re tear an Achilles, isn't it? I mean, as bad as it is to already tear it in the first place, and when he re tore it, it was while walking to the clubhouse. They also lost Marcel Ozuna for the season after he grabbed his wife and threw her into a wall in front of the police. F that guy. He wasn't doing well for the Braves this year anyways, only hitting 213, but was really good for them last year, even finished 6th in MVP voting. Jorge Soler's absence from the deciding game of the NLDS and most of the NLCS due to COVID is definitely way more significant than his numbers on the whole season would indicate. He did hit 500 in the two games he did play though and should definitely give the Braves a nice boost in the World Series. So the Braves took care of business against the Brewers and sure made a fool out of me. Okay, Brewers and Braves, I think that's an easy one. Yeah, the Brewers are definitely taking that one. I don't think any explanation is needed. The Brewers pitching's been lights out all year. Only the Dodgers and Giants had better pitching numbers for the whole season. Perhaps I should have looked at the fact that the Brewers did not finish the season strong. So the Braves were the ones that were riding some serious momentum. Of course, how you finish the regular season doesn't always mean everything. The 2000 Yankees and 2015 Kansas City Royals had terrible Septembers and they were able to win it all. But some momentum down the stretch of the regular season can carry over into the playoffs 
it seems as if it has done so for the Atlanta Braves. Max Fried was lights out down the stretch of the season. Charlie Morton in August and September was also lights out with a sub three ERA and a whip under one during that span. Morton hasn't exactly been spectacular in the playoffs though, but we'll see if he can be that in the World Series. Freddie Freeman did not get off to a great start to the season average wise, but he was still getting on base from June on though. He's been an MVP caliber player just like he was in the 60 game season last year. Or I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. I just know he was the MVP last year. He was definitely playing at an MVP level from June on. Jorge Soler, one of those trade deadline acquisitions that I mentioned earlier. The last two weeks of the season while hitting leadoff, he put up a 947 OPS. Eddie Rosario was solid for the Braves this year after he was brought in at the deadline. Austin Riley had a monster second half and I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like he's being slept on. He didn't have a great NLCS, but he did have a great NLDS. This season, he hit 33 home runs and 107 RBIs while hitting 303 with a 367 on base percentage. He had a 135 WRC plus. Much like the other guys, he was also better in the second half of the season. I'm sure there are plenty of guys that I didn't mention that you might bring up in the comments, but I think you guys do get the point, at least hope so, that the Braves were just a much better second half team than they were a first half team. They had the seventh best post all-star break record, which isn't jaw dropping or anything but I'm sure it at least gave them a lot of confidence especially towards the very end of the regular season. So after the Braves took care of business against the Brewers they went up against the juggernaut and defending World Series champions the Los Angeles Dodgers and made an even bigger fool out of me. I was right that the Dodgers would beat the Giants but I'll be honest no I didn't predict the Braves to even make it to the NLCS. But here they are now in the World Series for the first time since 1999. And I sure will be rooting for them in the World Series as they're playing the Houston Astros, a team I still won't respect anytime soon. As soon as the Astros beat the White Sox in the ALDS, something that I was right about actually in my busted bracket. Crazy how I know more about baseball than college basketball, yet my March Madness bracket actually happened to be a lot better than my MLB playoff bracket did. So ever since the White Sox lost to the Astros, I've been prepared to root for the National League team in the World Series. Last time the Braves faced the Astros in the playoffs was 2005 when the Astros were still in the National League. Now that the Astros are as hateable as they are, go Braves. Welcome to Atlanta where the players play and we ride on the things like every day. Big beats, hit streets, see gangsters roam and the party don't stop till 8 in the morning. I would put the music in but I don't want to get hit with a copyright. Although at least the ALCS MVP was not on the team in 2017. He was still in the minors. Jordan Alvarez is someone that I have no hard feelings towards and I don't think anyone really should as he didn't actually make his way to the big leagues until 2019. So first in the NLDS where the Braves took care of business against the Brewers who had a very strong regular season until it, towards the end, even with Christian Yelich never regaining his MVP form. Games two and three, the Braves shut out the Brewers. Jock Peterson, Jocktober, was in full effect as he hit 429 in that series. Freddie Freeman also played very well hitting 308 with a 471 on base percentage. The Braves pitching held the Brewers to just a 192 average for the whole series. Then the NLCS where they took down the defending champions. The Dodgers looked like they legitimately formed a super team at the deadline when they got Trey Turner and Max Scherzer. The Scherzer deal, I'm sure you already know, it was to fill in the void for Trevor Bauer as he's been dealing with legal issues, even with Clayton Kershaw out for the playoffs and my bad for not realizing that when I made my playoff prediction. Still, with Walker Buehler who's likely winning the Cy Young Award, Julio Urias who's a 20 game winner with a 296 ERA, and Max Scherzer, that should get you to the World Series, right? Their starting pitching had the best ERA in all of Major League Baseball. With the lineup that the Dodgers have, even with Cody Bellinger looking like a minor leaguer during the regular season and Mookie Betts, well not bad, he wasn't at peak form at all this year. Belly did put up some amazing stats in this series though hitting 412 with a 500 on base percentage. Unfortunately it wasn't enough for the Dodgers, not blaming Belly obviously but the Dodgers couldn't win even with Belly putting up numbers like that. Max Fried, Charlie Morton, and Ian Anderson, that's definitely not a bad top of the rotation. 
but compared to what the Dodgers had, it doesn't look nearly as amazing. So how the Braves pulled off the upset? We can start with the fact that Eddie Rosario was on fire hitting 560 with a 607 on base percentage and a slugging percentage over 1000. 1 1.040 to be exact, giving him an OPS of 1647. He also hit three home runs and nine RBIs. His third one was off Walker Bueller, and that was pretty much the icing on the cake for the series. Rosario's never been a 300 hitter in his career. The closest he's ever gotten to that was 290 in 2017. He's never been an all-star, but this series, he was just otherworldly. Freddie Freeman also had himself a good series, but Rosario was just a man on a mission. Obviously, it wasn't just offense alone that got the Braves to beat the Dodgers. Their starters weren't going deep into games, but they were were mostly good enough and the bullpen also really held it down for the Braves. Max Fried went six innings in game one but that was the deepest any starter went in this game. The Braves held Corey Seager to a 167 average, Mookie Betts to a 174 average, Will Smith to a 217 average, Trey Turner to a 240 average, and Justin Turner to 200. Out of all those guys, only Trey Turner and Will Smith had an on-base percentage of 300 or better. Not having Max Muncy definitely hurt the Dodgers. There's no question about that as he was out with a dislocated elbow that he suffered in the last game of the season. However, you'd think that the Braves need Ronald Acuna a lot more than the Dodgers need Max Muncy, right? No disrespect to Muncy, but just looking at who the Dodgers have in their lineup, it's funny how things work, right? The Braves walked off in both of the first two games. The first one already continued their momentum, a word that I've already said probably two or three times earlier in the video. Then you got two and you're up 2-0 heading to LA. So once again, more momentum. Even though the series really should have started in LA because the Dodgers were the much better regular season team. Still no excuse though as Trinan and Gratterall need to be better than they were. Trinan was great during the regular season though, Gratterall not so much. They did blow the first two games though. Even a game three victory for the Dodgers with Belly coming in clutch in the bottom of the eighth inning with a three run home run. And then Mookie Betts driving in another run with a double after Chris Taylor singled and stole second. And then Matt Beatty grounded out. Game four though, it was all Braves. Urias did not pitch well at all. Game five was all Dodgers. It looked like maybe the Dodgers will come back from another 3-1 deficit. And which in case anyone doesn't remember, the Dodgers did come back from 3-1 against the Braves last year. This time around though? Nope. Eddie Rosario had other plans against Walker Bueller pitching on short rest due to Max Scherzer having a dead arm. In case you don't know what a dead arm is, it's not an injury. Your arm just isn't right so Scherzer wasn't able to get as much power on his pitches as normal which forced Walker Bueller to pitch on three days rest. And Walker Bueller couldn't walk Rosario in that situation even as hot as Rosario has been in this series because that would have loaded the bases for Freddie Freeman who I'm definitely very happy for to finally be in the World Series. I just wish Ronald Acuna could have had something to do with this as he's one of my favorite non-Yankees. So, hey, let's go Braves. Let's please not have the Astros win the World Series this year, please. And no, I won't be happy for them at all for proving that they don't need to cheat. I hate them, period. And if Astros fans are watching this and want to subscribe, hey, your support is much appreciated, but just I don't like your team and I don't like the majority of the fans. Base. Also, Lance McCullers will be out for the World Series. Okay, I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about someone being injured, but this should definitely give the Braves an advantage. So while yes, many people including myself slept on the Braves and I most certainly should have paid more attention to how good they were in the second half of the season, it felt more like the Mets are just falling off a cliff. Well, they did fall off a cliff, but the Braves were also playing really well. Hey, like I said before though, I'm only one person I can only focus on so much and my main focus during the summer was, of course, my Yankees, which had its fun moments, had its not so fun moments, and of course the NL West, because I had a video on the San Francisco Giants in mind that I finally went through with last month that I definitely have to thank everyone for watching to make it my biggest success on YouTube yet. So I wanna point out one more fact before I close this out. 
The Braves are the first team to win under 90 games to make the World Series since both participants from the 2014 World Series. So thank you so much for sticking around to the end. If you want to consider liking this video, if you liked what you saw from me, that'd be much appreciated because it helps get this out to more people. If you want to please consider subscribing, that'd be much appreciated. I'm not too far away from a thousand and when I get there, I will start doing giveaways. So if you want to stick around for that and also for just more sports content for me in general. If you want to see a video on if playoff seating should be restructured, definitely stay tuned for that that's something that I am definitely considering making considering the fact that the Dodgers had a much better regular season yet the Braves had home field which is definitely odd but that's just how it worked because the Dodgers were the wild card team it's no excuse for the Dodgers to not win this series though as they should have been the better team either way but I do still think it's something to consider and if you want to also hit that notification bell that'd be much appreciated as well again links to my social media are in the the description so let me know who you have winning the world series i do think the astros deserve to be favored as much as i hate them however if the Braves didn't already prove to you that you shouldn't be sleeping on them anymore <laughs> i don't know what to tell you this is definitely a series that i think will go either way but i just really hope the braves win this series so once again thank you so much also if you want to click either of these videos up here in the end screen if you haven't watched either of those yet that'd be much appreciated as well so i'm gonna sign off now again thank you so much for sticking around i'll see you next time go braves